Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and welcome today to, to today's episode of Between Friends. I'm really excited about today's program, and I see many of you are signing in from all over the country. Um, Janet, you're sneaking on while you're at work. I won't tell if you won't tell, right? Hi, Misha. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Becky Munns in Denton, and we have Renal in north of Norway. That's awesome. Today is a, an exciting day. We're going to have the October door reveal, which is sitting right here. You can't see it yet, but you will at, towards the end of the program. But first, I want to share with you a new product that I've been spending quite a bit of time developing. And um, I've been so excited to share it with you. And it is called the Totally Tubular Pressing Station. And you're probably wondering why we came up with that name. Well, many years ago, I, Nancy Zeman and I wrote two books on handbags. And, you know, even prior to that, there were, I always struggled with creating a professional finish on a tubular item, such as a purse, a handbag. You know, there's so many tools that are out there for us to use to press, like, for instance, the sleeve board, right? The very traditional sleeve board has a narrow side and then one that's a little bit wider, but no sharp edges, right? It's covered with um, a heat protective surface and some foam and so forth. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't really do the job. And then, of course, there is... Um, June Taylor's very popular and it's been around for a long, long time, the Taylor board, which is great for clothing. You have a nice soft curve and you have points and you have a straight edge and you even have, you know, a, an odd shaped thing such as this. But you know what? When you're doing bags, none of these things work. They just don't work. So after struggling all this time, I thought, it would be a really great um, solution to many people's problems because all of us like to make bags. So let's take a look. We'll go over to the other camera so you can see what's in the box. And here we have what comes in the box of the totally tubular pressing station. We have three plates, right? So these are three plastic plates and a post plus three boards. One is 13 inches in length by one and a half in width. This board is three inches wide by 13 inches in length, and this is six inches by 13. When you purchase it, you will have to assemble um, the, the plate to the board. It comes with screws and the holes are pre-drilled for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But to use it, it just snaps together and all the pieces are interchangeable. So I'll just place that three inch board on top and I'll set this aside for now. And I want to show you, like when Nancy and I made bags, I'm going to flip this over and use the six inch side. When Nancy and I made bags, we like to use that um, heavy interfacing <clears throat> and sew it all the way, you know, baste it to the bag outer front and back and then sew the bottom seam. That's what we did first. And in doing so, you're going to have some of this in the seam allowance, which some designers will tell you not to make your, your interfacing so large to actually cut it so that you don't catch it in the seam. But actually, that doesn't support the bag all that well. So because I'm on this flat tube, I mean this flat tubular uh, pressing station, and I have that hard wood edge, I can just give this a really good press and it'll stay open. Now, Nancy and I would go to the machine and we would zigzag across this opening. And here I even have a bag to kind of show you, I hope we can get uh, an image of that, that in this finished bag, we zigzag over that seam and that reinforces it, makes it really strong. That bag will never fall apart. That's kind of an old bag. But so that's one use for it. But what if you are pressing, you know, or embroidering and appliquing children's items such as a onesie? It is so easy to just slip this over that wood board and press it. it there's also a wool mat that's available. 
that in uh, two companion sizes, the three by 13 and the six by 13. So if I was going to do clothing, I would just put this in here. And then when I want to press with steam, I most certainly can. And everything is nice and smooth. Now, children's clothing, I mean, larger children's clothing, clothing like toddlers and so forth, these small shirts are so hard to get over your ironing board. So here we have a children's size four, works just beautifully, right? And then I can press that, get rid of all those wrinkles. I love that. You know, we embroider on blanks all the time. And, you know, Nancy and I, we also did our designer neckline shirts, right? And if you remember that embroidery design is added to a finished t-shirt. Uh, and then with the fancy magic of interfacing, we finish that edge. So let me show you how to do that on the board. Now, I always struggled with doing that on a traditional ironing board or even the sleeve board didn't give me hard enough surface so that I could push that interfacing to the inside and really get a nice crisp edge so that that interfacing was never visible. And then I would just press and work my way all the way down to the center point. But you know, that's another whole lesson for another day. But back to, to bags, little bags, whether it's that heavy stiff interfacing or if it is the foam that's so popular now, there's so many different brands of that foam and we all like to use them. And so here you can see it'll press that open just beautifully. But I wanna show you a bag, a little fabric bin that I created. And here you can see, this is finished. Look at that nice crisp corner and that beautiful finish on the bottom. Really a nice crisp finish. Here it is before it's pressed. And it just kind of looks like a round item that you can't really see see any definition. You do see your outside seams, but outside of that, not so great. So let's take a look at how I would start that process. Here I have my lining and my outer fabric. And with the outer fabric, I have fused that fusible foam to my fabric. And now to press that side seam open, I'm gonna switch boards and I wanna show you just how easy that is. So I'm just going to press on the top board, slip it off and just pull on my skinny board, put that on there. And now I am ready to press that foam open. And I just get my iron. Uh, you could use steam with the foam. Of course you can follow the manufacturer's instructions on the foam. It doesn't matter to us whether you use the steam or not. And then same thing on the other side. And, and it's also great on just the cotton fabric. It doesn't even have to be all this heavy foam. And I'll show you that on the lining piece. Now, I normally at home use a full size iron on the totally tubular pressing station. But I thought for demonstration purposes today, it would be easiest to just show it with this mini iron, which is quite handy, right? If you're going to class or what have you. It's quite handy. It's also nice to have right next to your sewing machine. And so on just regular cotton, look at that crisp finish that you're going to get. I love how that opens. That seems so nice. And here I have my opening where I'm going to turn my bag later on. There we go. And so at the next stage, I would just turn this right side out and insert that into that foam. And then we box the corner. Now I've already got that pretty far along on this bag. So I'm gonna flip my board over and go to my six inch side. So you can see how I would do this process. Now, so here's my top edge, which is, you know, here's my lining all coming out, right? And I wanna get it all folded down and nice and crisp and also pinned in place. So because I'm on this hard wood surface, I just press, pulling that down, and then I would add my pins. Now, if I were home, I would have my stash of clips. <laughs> I forgot to bring the clips in. Who can make a bag without those wonder clips, right? So I do the fronts 
you know, the front and the back. And then I would switch boards over to that three inch board because I want to show you how I'm going to get those really nice crisp edges on the sides because it's all about getting that structure. So now that I have that in place, I want to set my bag so that the bottom seam is aligned with the edge of the bag and then the side is aligned with that sharp edge. And then I literally push the iron right along the edge of the wood and also here at the bottom, I can even turn it like this and reinforce that bottom seam. And then I'll just slide the bag over a little bit because my opening here is actually four inches in width. So it's a little bit bigger than my press board here. And then again, I'm just going to add that crease to the side and I'll turn the board and continue to fold and not fold, but press. And I, I would do that on both sides. It is just absolutely amazing how you can get that nice crisp edge. Then off to the machine and edge stitch all the way around the top. So I have one here that is already edge stitched but it, the sides are still not, um, you, you know, there's no form in the bottom and there's no real form on the sides. So I can start on my three inch board and I'll just press that down so that my corner is aligned with the board and, and then I'll press that crease. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And then eventually I'm going to switch this board to the six inch board so that I can get the front panel really crisp and really firm. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'll just take off this skinny one because I won't be needing that right now and slip this back on. And you know, this all stores, it's so easy to store. I just have a little bin like a, you know, uh, a small box, let's call it, next to my ironing board that has my, I, my I, I actually have two irons. I have one that I always use for steam and one that I use dry. And then I have starch and sizing. And I know we're not supposed to use starch, but my husband likes starch, so that's his starch. And I have distilled water there and I have press cloths and Teflon pressing sheets. And now I just also have my totally tubular station there. But I am getting these nice, firm, crisp edges because I am right along that sharp edge of the wood. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And again, I'm seating the bottom of the bag at the edge of the wood and I'm making sure that I crease right in there. Now, I have a dry iron right here, but I most certainly would use steam. If I were not doing a Facebook Live broadcast, I would definitely use steam. And then here we got one more corner to go, and we'll do the same thing. And then, wow, does that give you such a nice professional finish on your bag or bin? This is just a fabric bin. So isn't that fantastic? Don't you just, aren't you so impressed with that? I know I am. I'm so excited. So let's see what you're saying. Why are we not supposed to use starch? Well, Kirsten, some people say, um, Kirsten wants to know, why are we not supposed to use starch? Well, starch is actually made of a vegetable, you know, potatoes. So um, a lot of people feel that it can have a pest infest, you know, can get in your fabric. So that's the main reason why we don't, why many, fabric people don't like to use the starch because if they, you know, press their whole stash and have it in their sewing room, eh, not so much. Not so, uh, and Sandra Conley, have we shown the door yet? Nope, not yet. That's what's coming. So do you have any questions about this? I mean, I, Sue Brown, she thinks it will make ironing so much easier. You know, if you make a lot of bags, this is absolutely the solution for pressing those bags because they're a challenge. You can't do them on a regular ironing board with that pointed tip and you don't get a nice crisp edge. You, you can't even get the bag on the board because it's just too narrow. The bag is too narrow and the opening is too small. 
And I know, Isabel Brian, you say another item you can't live without. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, and let me see. Hey, all garment sewers, this would be great for collars and cuffs and sleeves. Absolutely. Sleeves, pant legs, hems. What about that? Best press. You most certainly can use best press. It is not made from starch and that's a wonderful product. I use that all, all the time. And actually that's also in my bin of things. Um, Cindy King says it would be good to clamp to a table for stability. Well, I can tell you I'm on an upholstered surface here in the studio due to sound. Without it, you would just hear me clunking around a lot of times. So everything we kind of have in here has been, um, uh, you know, softened. So you wouldn't have that problem at home. I don't have it on my, uh, my problem at home. So let's see. And Judy Warren, you like it because of the portability. I know it just, you know, stores really nice and flat. It's um, what, what I love. And has the board been tested with a Cricut Easy Presses? No, it has not. I don't think you would need that with a press. They have their own system. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, well, you sure could use that. Yeah, it has no steam. You could use that for sure. Mm -hmm. And Misha would be great for small t-shirts with HTV. Absolutely. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I've been so excited about it and we can't wait to get it out. Now, I did mention that um, the, board, the wool mats are sold separately and they are cut to the right size for that three inch wide board and the six inch wide board. We don't make it for the one and a half inch board because, you know, too, too skimpy. That would be flopping all over the place. So we're pretty excited about that. And, um, you know, thanks for joining us, Aurora from North Texas. That's where we are here too. And today is, um, little cool here. Let's see. Looks like uh, she said, Tammy says, where and when can I get the pressing boards? I love the looks. Very handy next to my, your machine. Well, they're available now through our website. Some sewing machine retailers do have them, but you most certainly can get them now. They are available. We have um, a very decent amount assembled and ready to go. I have a package so you can see how it's shipped. It goes, all your pieces are in here. You will have to, just a very light assembly. So yeah, I know we're super excited. I love it. And I know you're all just dying for the board. Sharon says, brilliant. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> I love creating new product. You know, I really like making solutions for all the problems that we encounter in our, in our mainly our embroidery studio, but sometimes it's just when I'm sewing. You know, I do this kind of every day, kind of every day. Um, so, you know, always looking for solutions. So if you have problems, tell us, we'd be happy to fix them. But I guess you all really want to know the October door, right? So, okay, let's show it. First, we have to follow, we have to start out with where we started, January through April. And then we have May, June, July, August, September. And then here is October. He, oh, look who's coming, right? Ooh. So here he is. Isn't he adorable? Here, I'm going to hold him up. And uh, so we have mice on the bottom. And we have a really fun broom. It's a screen door with some doodads, you know, some ornamentation that is normally found on screen doors. And a black spider web big black spider up here the spider down here is actually purple and then finally one of the last things you do is add all these critters at the top the little spiders and the bats so it's going to be super fun so let's go ahead and take a look at the process so you can see how you're going to make it the very first thing you're going to do of course is hoop your, I used a heavy cutaway because that spider web, a, a medium cutaway, that spider web is pretty stitch intensive. So um, I thought that it needed more than just a, uh, you know, lightweight, uh, like definitely not a tear away and not a light cutaway. So once you um, hoop your cutaway fab stabilizer, then place batting in the hoop and stitch color one. And that will tack down the batting 
and you'll notice there's two notches right and left. Well, that is going to be where the seam line meets the, uh, the, the house and the front porch. So let's go ahead and take a look. You're gonna make your tabs, three and a half inch squares, turn in those roll edges and fold them and then just set them aside. And once you then place that top portion of the placement guide with um, the house fabric, it will tack it down and it will stitch the, the door detail of, uh, not the door detail, the house detail of the like clapboard. And it will also give you an outline for the screen that you'll use a little bit later on. The next step is to take a piece of the porch fabric and place that right sides together, extending the bottom of that porch fabric just beyond that bottom line of the house because that's, you know, you're extending that fabric so that that becomes your seam allowance. And then you stitch the next color, which is a straight stitch across the width of the door. And then pull down the fabric, the porch fabric, and finger press it right in the hoop, or take it over to your totally tubular pressing station <laughs> and press it there. Um, and then once that's in place, it will stitch a tack down of the porch and also the porch detail, those boards that, that you know go on an angle into the house. And then you're going to need to add some door fabric. And I just used the same fabric as the house, but I also added a layer of black tulle just to give it some depth. So, you know, my concept is that it's a screen door because that's what you're seeing the spiders through the screen door, but it doesn't have to be that same concept. So um, once you stitch that in place, you'll tack it down, trim it away, and then it will stitch all the black spider webs and the mice in the porch. That's all one color. And then you will have a separate color for the purple spider on the bottom. And I used our purple King Star Metallic because he's, uh, we love that purple metallic. It's stitching out just beautifully. People are loving it. And then the next thing you do is uh, you're going to cover that uh, screen door with door frame fabric. Well, I guess the image on the left is actually, the next color is the doodad. So the ornamentation, and you can see I've stitched them there in white. They kind of look like little elements of lace, but they're not, they're, that's embroidery. You could stitch that in any color you want. And then, so you place your door frame fabric in place it will stitch that large outer frame and the two openings. Now you have to snip that door fabric in the center of those openings so that you can slip your scissors you know, inside so that you can trim away. And Cindy West wants to know, do we have glow in the dark thread? We do not have glow in the dark thread, Cindy. It has such a limited use, such a limited appeal. We have actually never, uh, brought that to market. But I know some people really like it and they find good uses for it. Okay, so once you trim away the door and it will give you a satin edge, then it's onto the broom. And I stitched my handle in purple thread because I just thought that was super fun and you'll love the bristles. They have um, really fun satin stitches, top and bottom, and of course a complex fill in the middle. That's all that um, really sexy embroidery talk. <laughs> and then uh, an orange, the only little bit of orange on the whole door is the, uh, the horizontal band that keeps those bristles together. So uh, that's super fun. And then the last black color that you'll stitch will be those the two bats and the spiders that are hanging from the top. And next you will add your prepared tabs and notice, you know, I do use painter's tape. My painter's tape's coming a little loose there, but um, I just threw it in there so you would get the concept. And then of course, when you stitch it, that's what's gonna tack it down into place. And notice how the seam allowance of those tabs extends about a half inch beyond the top of the block. So that's what you, um, you know, that's how you capture those tabs in there. And then finally, you will add your backing fabric and it will stitch all the way around and then you will get the final um, door. Sorry about that. Okay, and then Wendy 
Hanson wanted to know how do we get the mini designs? All the designs that you see right there on the screen right now are included with the download of the design uh, of the dime door. And, uh, but our friends over at OML Embroidery do a Facebook group when all of that is free and you can, they do a sew along on Saturday morning. So they'll be doing this door on Saturday morning. You can hop over there and see what Don and Sue Brown will be offering or giving you as uh, new little mini designs to add to the door. I, I didn't really embellish this door all that much. I, I thought that the broom was just a subtle, addition to the door because I know that, you know, pumpkins would be fun and maybe a big sign that said, welcome fall. Or down here in Texas, we see it's fall, y'all, everywhere. So, you know, there's lots of opportunity for you to add your own embellishments. So um, that's uh, that's where you get those extra mini designs, Wendy. Wendy. And uh, they're wondering what will Judy come up with? Who knows? I mean, Judy Quilt is wondering what Don will come up with. We have no idea. So we are really excited about our new totally tubular pressing station. If you make bags, you're going to love it. I'll tell you because, you know, it's a problem pressing tubular items for sure. And it's something that I've struggled with for year, decades, really. Nancy and I made those books so long ago. And um, back then it was a problem and it still is a problem. So it's a good solution for those of us who like to make a lot of bags. And, um, oh, Jackie, thank you. The door is wonderful. I, I really had a lot of fun with this one. And I, I really enjoyed learning how to digitize the spider web and you know, get your, my pathing in a efficient manner. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, of course, it's easy to digitize with just one color black, you know, there's not any highlighting, not any shading. So if you are learning how to digitize, that Halloween is a good time that you can um, kind of stretch your skills because you don't need a lot of highlighting, a lot of shading, and you can get a, a big punch with just black. So I would like to show you our uh, a little peek into the past. I have a beautiful handkerchief. If you remember, these all come from my friend um, Richard Jardin at embroideryarts.com. And let me swing this around. Oh, no, it is. is it, yeah, it's going in the right direction. Okay, good. Isn't this stunning? So as we here, you know, I'm going to lift this up a little higher so it fills the screen. Um, as you can see, this is um, a beautiful monogrammed letter. And we have cut work in here. Look at all these different cut work elements that frame this beautiful letter. And then applique. This is a cotton fabric here, but this is a, a light satin fabric that has been needle turned on the inside. You can just see that tiny little seam allowance. And it looks like they used a wing needle to applique the uh, extra fabric to the base. You can see those tiny little hole perforations. We have some French knots that are exquisitely produced and embellished the corner. They also make up the flower in, these, uh, in this medallion here and also here. And also we have padded satin stitches that are just gorgeous. These are all raised. I'm not sure that you can see that they're raised, but each of them is, you know, elevated over something underneath. It's absolutely beautiful. And this letter is applique also. This is probably shadow work. We can take a look at the back and you can see just how delicate all of this work is. All of it is just absolutely beautiful. I'm so impressed with, um, the time that was spent to create this very tiny piece of art, you know, an absolute work of art, and uh, the stitches, the, everyone is executed absolutely perfectly. So that's our little peek into the past, treasures of the past. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, they are really, they are gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Everyone, it, I, the box is just full of goodies. I can't even tell you how amazing it is. And I, I, I never did hand embroidery. I started with machine and I used to joke that really hand embroidery, 
you know, any kind of sewing that has the word hand in it is a four letter word. Cause you know, I was all about machines and, um, and I still am, but I most certainly appreciate the talent and the time that goes into a creation like that for sure. So, oh, you're welcome. I, yeah, I'm happy to share it cause you know, they, they should be seen. They should really should be in a magazine some way, uh, somewhere, uh, not a magazine, a museum. Let's see. Uh, so Sharon has a question about my lace maker. How do I get purchased lace designs into the software? So when I open the designs link, I can select them there. Yes, that is a question for a later time. And um, I, 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 I want to promise that I'm going to put it up on a blog for you. Uh, so, but this week is a very busy week. So look for it in about a week. Um, but it happens in the install. When you install those purchase programs, if you select My Lace Maker, it will install in there. If you have, um, if you have My Lace Maker from over a year ago, that is um, then now today, due to updates, you may not be able to find those designs. But we can, we can work with you for that, most certainly. You can uh, send in a ticket into, into our software support page over at Inspired by Dime and they can walk you through it or just give me two weeks and we'll get it up on the, the blog on how to do that. So, um, okay, next week, what are we talking about next week? I don't know that I gave you a, uh, oh yeah, next week is super fun. We are going to talk all about t-shirts because, you know, isn't that what many of us live in, right? We're going to talk about left chest embroidery, right chest embroidery, how to stabilize knits, the, the right um, thread and the right, needles to use, all of that. So it's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you'll join us here at one o'clock. And what else? We want to see your doors. So when you make your doors this week, make sure you tag them with the hashtag dime door or hashtag dime doors. And um, we will make sure that we will find, that's the only way we can find them is to, if you put that hashtag on them. So uh, let's see, here we have, um, this is where you reach our software support. Thank you uh, to my team who, get, who got that link up there. And Dory Hobson, my blog is uh, dzgns.com slash blog, see it at the bottom. So there you go, yeah. So I really wanna see those doors next week. I absolutely wanna see those doors. I'm gonna be searching for them. I usually wait till about Monday to start looking for them. So. I hope that uh, I see lots of different variety because I think that's really fun. And oh, PJ, so you're looking forward to next week with the t-shirts. Yeah, we all need help with t-shirts, believe me. And you know, it's, um, it's the number one task that embroiderers are asked to do. Can you just put a logo on my t-shirt? Can you just put a small design on this t-shirt? So we're gonna nail that and get um, some of the really good tips and techniques for you to, get those left chest uh, t-shirts stitched. So until then, I hope you have a uh, happy stitching and uh, get going on those doors and we'll be here next week at one o'clock. Thank you for joining me.